Hi, I'm back with another video and today I'm looking at narrative theories. So I'm going to start by looking at Christopher Booker's seven basic plots and then I'll move on to Svetan Todorov's narrative structures. This video might be useful for any students that are trying to create their own narratives, whether you're writing as a hobby or you're um, being asked to write a piece of fiction for your GCSE or A-levels. This video could be useful for you to help think about um, more conceptual ideas of how narratives are created and models that you could apply to your own writing. OK, let's start with Christopher Booker's seven basic plot theory. So Christopher Booker developed the argument, the idea or the concept and that there were only seven basic plots that existed across time um, of story writing. And these could be applied to any given narrative that existed. Um, so I'm going to go through them a one to seven um, and then we'll try and apply this to um, one of my chosen novels. So number one is the idea of overcoming the monster. So so in this plot structure, the Christopher Booker argued that this consists of um, the hero or the protagonist who learns of a great evil threatening a land and sets out to destroy it. So this could be a physical monster. Um, for example, many horror films fit this basic plot um, where they literally have to go out and destroy the monster. Or this could be more of a um, conceptual idea, a, a threat posed on society that the hero has to go out um, and and stop. His second basic plot is the plot of rags to riches, which is where there's a, a hero that has um, very little money or means to get by. Um, and then they come into some wealth um, or they inherit a property. Um, and alongside that, they get a better quality of life. Uh, number three is the quest in which a hero sets out on a mission and they face many obstacles and temptations along the way. So they might have a threat or to their character that's posed, um, good or bad, and they basically go out on a mission and an adventure. And many adventure stories fit into the narrative of the quest. Number four is the idea of voyage and return, in which the hero ventures out to a strange land um, full of new curiosities and they overcome any threats that this land may pose and they return a changed person. So you might notice that there's a similarity between the quest and the voyage and return. The differentiating factor is that there is a change to the protagonist or the hero at the end of the voyage and return um, plot structure. Whereas in the quest, you might find that the protagonist just stays a static character from the beginning to the end. The fifth narrative structure that he developed was a comedy and straightforwardly it is just a light and humorous story and that has a happy and cheerful ending um, and most comedies that exist will conform to this narrative structure. The sixth uh, plot structure that he developed was a tragedy and this um, consists of a, a protagonist that is maybe a villain and, and their death is a cause for rejoice or catharsis. Um, if you're interested in tragedy, you might want to explore the ideas um, that are uh, began with Aristotelian tragedy. Uh, he has his own particular model. If you want to look into tragic heroes in more detail, um, I would encourage you to go and explore that model next. The seventh structure is this idea of a rebirth. So it's a story of re reinvention, renewal. Um, it, the story often begins with um, some element of tragedy or some sadness and um, the, the protagonist will experience some sort of personal growth or development in their life um, and it ends with a happy ending. OK, so now I'd like to apply Christopher Booker's seven basic plot theory to one of my favourite all time novels, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, which is a, a wonderful novel. Um, if you haven't read it, please go and do so. It's available for free online. Um, watch the trailer to the uh, the film or the TV adaptations if you'd like to get a bit more informed before um, you continue watching the video. You can do that now. OK, so I'm going to continue with this. Now, the story itself revolves around the protagonist, uh, Pip Philip Pirrip, and it charts his um, development from a young boy to a man. And he comes into a lot of unexpected wealth um, and his life is transformed by that. Now, that might lead you to believe immediately that this fits into the rags to riches, the, the second um, plot structure. However, I would argue that 
um, a different structure could be applied. I would argue that Great Expectations fits better into the pot structure of Voyage and Return because Pip due to his inherited wealth um, has to venture into a strange land he he literally changes his location and moves to london um, and is surrounded by many new um, characters new temptations um, and many threats by the the life and the inhabitants of london um, and because of that he he is changed by the experiences um, and he then returns to his original location um, and is very much changed by the events that happened to him. If you disagree with my um, analysis, please feel free to pop a comment down below um, and let me know what you think. But I would argue that Great Expectations could be applied to the rags, the rags to riches could be applied to Great Expectations, but I would argue this fits better into the structure of Voyage and Return. Okay, so now pick your own favourite novel or short story or film and see which of Christopher Booker's seven basic plots you feel um, your text best fits into. You might be a little bit confused and think that there might be multiple plots. I would try and refine it down to the most um, clear plot structure you can if there are a couple of overlapping ones which seems to be the overriding one or the one that takes you to the end of the text and I would choose that as your as your main plot structure if you're trying to write your own piece of fiction it might be useful for you to also choose one of these narrative structures to to base your ideas on um, so whatever ideas you've got for character setting and basic plot think about utilizing the format of this um, story arc to enable you to have a, a clear uh, plot outline so now we're moving on to Zvetan Todorov's narrative theory of equilibrium. And this is essentially um, one particular idea about every single narrative um, that exists. Todorov argued that narratives tend to follow this quite simplistic um, plot structure. Again, please do remember that these theories are, as just, they are theoretical, um, so they might not be applicable to every single narrative that you encounter. Um, but again, they give you a good idea, a hinge point in which to base your own writing on um, or to analyse whatever particular text you're having a look at. So I'm going to start by explaining what each of these um, narrative structures um, refer to and then I'm going to apply it back to Great Expectations. So Todorov argued that every narrative follows a particular um, pattern of five stages and the first stage that he argued um, most narratives begin with is this idea of equilibrium. So it's the concept that life is just right and we've got a norm for the character that exists at the beginning of every single plot um, and on the whole uh, the character's life appears to be normal and balanced and there's no major disruptions to the life as of yet. And the second stage that a narrative normally follows is this idea of disruption, disruption to that first equilibrium. So something happens to the character, the main character, the protagonist, to disrupt their equilibrium, change their life as it once was at the beginning of the narrative. The third stage, um, according to Todorov's theory, is the idea of recognition, that the protagonist now realises that their life has changed. And more often than not, this is um, not for the better. This is a undesirable change. Um, so it's a challenge, if you will. So this is essentially the conflict to the story, which, which most um, narratives consist of. The fourth stage of Todorov's theory is the repair phase and this is when um, the protagonist tries to repair the um, issues that have come from the disruption to their previous equilibrium they set out writing any wrongs that have happened and trying to restore that balance and that harmony that existed at the start of the narrative and the final stage of Todorov's theory is 
the idea of a new equilibrium. So due to the disruption that existed and the recognition that the protagonists um, faced, they've now worked through any problems that they've encountered and they've changed and developed and grown as a person. And they've now established a new equilibrium, a new norm. However, life is better than it as it was than at the beginning of the fiction or uh, whatever narrative that you're studying film or fiction. OK, so I'm now going to apply uh, Todorov's theory to Great Expectations. If you disagree with any of my ideas, um, please do comment below. Again, this is, th this is a theoretical um, analysis. You might argue that there are other moments in the novel which could be applied to some of Todorov's uh, stages. I'd love to hear your comments, but let's begin. OK, so those of you out there that have read Great Expectations could argue with me that there isn't really a sense of equilibrium at the start of the novel because it begins very dramatically with a um, a very serious event that shapes the course of Pip's life, which is him encountering an escaped convict called Magwitch on the marshes. However, I would argue that even after that very dramatic event, we see Pip's life as it is and the normality, which is his life on the forge with Joe Gardry, as depicted in the image there. Um, and although Pip's life is probably far from normal, um, he does that is his norm. He lives on the forge. He lives with his um, sister, Mrs. Joe Gardry, and with his um, his brother-in-law Joe Gardry who he has a loving relationship with. I would argue that the main event that disrupts the equilibrium in Pip's life is when he's invited to set his house to play with Estella and um, that of course is Miss Havisham that um, invites him to uh, set his house and the the main event that changes the course of Pip's life is him meeting and falling in love with the young Estella um, so that moment is what I would um, suggest to be the disrupting factor within the novel now the novel is quite a vast novel and so I am skipping ahead quite a bit um, but I would argue that the moment of recognition for Pip is when he begins to realise how miserable his uh, undying love for Estella is making him. Um, even having inherited his unexpected fortune and even having moved to London to become a gentleman, when he is reunited with um, Estella as a, a young man, he's able, he's able to see that even despite this change in his life, his life has not transformed for the better. He's very, very miserable. Um, as such. Again, because Great Expectations is such a vast novel with many subplots, um, the idea of repair is open for debate. Um, it could be argued that um, Pip tries to repair the situation when he confronts Miss Havisham about her part in setting up the situation between himself and Estella. But I would argue um, this is most applicable when um, Pip tries to help Magwitch escape from um, the the uh, policemen that are trying to put him back into prison um, and he becomes more altruistic and more helpful uh, and sort of tries to right the wrongs that he feels are formed in his character um, due to being around um, unsavourable character, uh, characters when he's been living in London. Um, and I wouldn't argue that we see a sense of a new equilibrium really right until the end of the novel. Even towards the final chapters, there are a lot of events that happen. Pip um, goes away on his travels to Cairo and he returns um, and, and meets many of his old friends along the way. Um, but finally, when he returns to Satis House, if you go with the, um, the second ending of the novel, if you're interested in exploring the fact that this, this novel does have two endings, please do go away and do your own research on that. It's absolutely fascinating. But if we go with the second, more optimistic novel, we see Pip return to Satis House or the ruins of Satis House and being reunited with Estella. And there's a prospect of them establishing a new life together which creates this idea of a full fully formed new equilibrium um, and the chance for a new and hopeful life with his his true love <laughs> 